There is little doubt that the modern world owes a great deal to ancient Greek society. If we wander around a city center in almost every major city in the Western world today, we will pass courthouses and government buildings which were constructed using Greek architectural methods. Every school child today still studies numerous subjects which were effectively created by the ancient Greeks, be they history, philosophy, mathematics, or many others besides. The word atom, one of the building blocks of the universe, is a term invented by the Milesian school of Greek philosophers in the 6th century BCE. Some of the most significant cities across the Mediterranean Sea were established as Greek colonies well beyond the shores of what we call Greece today. These include cities like Syracuse in Sicily, Marseille in southern France, and Naples in southern Italy, the latter being a Latinized version of the word Neapolis, or New City, as the Greeks who first settled here called it. In all manner of ways, we live in a world profoundly influenced by the Greeks, but not all of this occurred during just one period of Greek history. Instead, ancient Greek history played out over a period of well over a millennium, commencing in the Late Bronze Age around 1500 BCE and continuing through until Greece was conquered and became part of the Roman Empire in the 2nd century BCE. Sometimes Greece was buoyant during this one 300-year period, but in other periods it was declining. Here we explore the various periods of ancient Greek society and political culture, the heroic age of the Late Bronze Age. Ancient Greek culture first began to emerge as a major part of the developed world in the period roughly between 1800 BCE and 1400 BCE. The Greek world was never united under one state or political system, but rather was always comprised of many different kingdoms, city-states, republics, and the like. The most powerful of these in the early stages of Greek culture was Mycenae, a kingdom in the central part of the Peloponnese in the southern part of mainland Greece, along with the Minoan civilization which controlled the island of Crete and was a major trading power in the eastern Mediterranean with ships sailing out of its great capital of Knossos. This was what is often known as the heroic age of Greek culture a semi-mythical period in which the famous Trojan War which the poet Homer would later immortalize in the Iliad and the Odyssey took place, while the Greek religious system of polytheism with many different gods and goddesses also emerged. This would later be captured in the poetical works of Hesiod, entitled The Theogony and the Works and Days. Powers such as Mycenae, Sparta, the Minoans and Troy dominated much of the eastern Mediterranean during this era trading extensively with other powers such as the Hittites of Asia Minor, modern-day Turkey, Pharaonic Egypt under rulers like the great king Rameses II, and Babylon and the Canaanites in the Levant and further east into Mesopotamia around modern-day Iraq. The Dark Ages. Ancient Greek history was not a tale of continuous progress and success. Like all civilizations, it experienced setbacks and collapses. In the case of ancient Greece, this came about at the end of the Late Bronze Age between 1400 BCE and 1200 BCE. This was a period of enormous difficulty across the developed world of the Eastern Mediterranean as the Hittite Empire of Turkey collapsed. New Kingdom Egypt witnessed a brutal societal regression as it was invaded by a mysterious people known only as the Sea People, who probably came from the Western Mediterranean to attack Egypt's main cities and many other cultures in this part of the world disintegrated to a large extent. The situation was no different within the Greek world. On the mainland, states like Mycenae were overrun by the invasion of Attica and the Peloponnese by the Dorians, a new power from the north of the Balkans, while the Minoans, whose culture had flourished to such a great extent on the island of Crete, saw their cities destroyed by a series of enormous earthquakes which destroyed the city of Knossos to a great extent. The societies of the ancient eastern Mediterranean collapsed as a result, and it would take three to four centuries for them to begin re-emerging as the powers they had been in times gone by. This era, between 1200 BCE and 800 BCE, is generally referred to as the Ancient Dark Age, an era for which there are few written records, and we know little about it. But once the Greeks began to emerge from the Dark Ages, they would enter a period of unprecedented vitality of which we are all the beneficiaries today. The Rise of the City-States 
we begin to see a new period of Greek history from roughly 800 BCE onwards. This was the beginning of the era of the Greek city-state or polis, plural polis. Eventually, there would be hundreds of these city-states. Many of them were little more than the size of modest towns by today's standards, with a few thousand people and some surrounding countryside where enough food was grown to feed the city-state citizens. In the beginning, these were concentrated on the Greek mainland and some of the islands in the Aegean Sea, but over time, many of these city-states sent out groups of hundreds of their citizens to establish colonies elsewhere. For instance, Corinth, a city-state which controlled the Isthmus of Corinth, which divides the Peloponnese from North Greece, sent out numerous colonies of people to establish city-states in Sicily and southern Italy. Consequently, the Greek world expanded between the 8th and 6th centuries BCE to involve colonies in regions as disparate as the coasts of Spain, France and Italy to Libya in North Africa and even the Crimean Peninsula in the Black Sea. Some of these city-states were more powerful than others. For instance, Sparta, a highly militarized society which came to control much of the Peloponnese, emerged as a dual monarchy with two kings in the 8th century BCE after a new constitution was established there by its semi-mythical lawmaker Lycurgus. Similarly, a highly accomplished lawgiver by the name of Solon reformed the politics of Athens, a country which was ruled as a dictatorship in the 6th century BCE before emerging around 510 BCE as a democracy. The culture of these hundreds of city-states was also expanding enormously during this period. For instance, the city-state of Miletus on the western coastline of what is now Turkey, but which was known as Asia Minor at the time, became a haven for the first major philosophers and scientists of ancient times, men like Thales and Anaximander, who began to question why human beings existed, how they should behave in order to be rational, moral beings, and also what the physical world was comprised of. For example, the modern concept of the world being comprised of atoms on a molecular level comes from the Milesian school of philosophers who first concluded that the world was made up of microscopic particles that are invisible to the human eye, but which are the building blocks of existence. Classical Greece. Eventually, these nascent city-states across the Greek world entered into the period of Greek history which is known as Classical Greece, a period which runs roughly from 500 BCE to the 320 S BCE. This is recognized as the height of ancient Greek culture. For instance, the discipline of history is understood to have emerged in classical Greece as the first great historians such as Herodotus, Thucydides, and Xenophon produced the first major works of history. Similarly, Athenian drama and comedy emerged as some of the world's earliest great literature, as playwrights like Aeschylus, Euripides, Sophocles, and Aristophanes composed immensely sophisticated plays. In the realm of philosophy, this was the age of Socrates, Plato, and Aristotle, while Greek architecture reached its height as buildings like the Parthenon on the Acropolis of Athens were built. Yet the classical era was also one of contradictions. It was an extremely violent period, one which saw the Persians, a major empire based out of modern-day Iran, invade Greece twice in the early 5th century BCE, leading to the famous defense of the Pass of Thermopylae by the Spartans in 481 BCE, an episode immortalized in the film 300 in recent times. Thereafter, Sparta and Athens became major rivals for control of the Greek world, leading to the outbreak in 431 BCE of the Peloponnesian War, which would last for 27 years, finally ending in the victory of Sparta and her allies over Athens. It was the best of times and the worst of times in many ways. The Macedonian Empire Despite the best efforts of the Persian Empire to conquer Greece in the 5th century BCE, followed by the Peloponnesian War between Sparta and Athens for dominance of the Greek mainland at the end of the century, it was a power which few could have predicted the emergence of which finally united the Greek world under one ruler in the 4th century BCE. This was the Kingdom of Macedon, a relatively backwards and underdeveloped power based out of the foothills of Thessaly and northern Greece. In the 370 S and 360 S BCE, it began to emerge as a new considerable power in the north of Greece, in large part because Athens, Sparta, Corinth and other powers such as Thebes were quite simply declining owing to decades of warfare. 
Under King Philip II, Macedon conquered the vast majority of the Greek mainland, but it was his son and heir, Alexander, who succeeded him in 336 BCE that would really turn Macedon into the greatest military power Greece had ever known. After pacifying the remaining Greek powers, he assembled an army of hundreds of thousands of Greek phalanx warriors and marched eastwards to conquer the Persian Empire in the late 330 S BCE. Over the next decade, he not only conquered the Persian Empire, which comprised Turkey, Egypt and the Middle East at the time, but kept marching eastwards until he eventually arrived to northern India, a part of the world which was virtually unknown to the people of the Mediterranean at the time. He died all too prematurely in 323 BCE at just 32 years of age, but even by then he had conquered most of the known world and is remembered today as Alexander the Great, the Hellenistic period. No one ruler emerged to succeed Alexander. Instead, civil war descended across his vast empire, following his death as his generals and followers. Men like Ptolemy and Seleucus sought to carve out their own principalities. Eventually, a number of successor kingdoms would emerge. Macedon and Greece would be ruled as the Kingdom of Macedon. Much of the Levant and Middle East was taken over by Seleucus and his family and governed as the Seleucid Empire, while Egypt and some of the Mediterranean islands were incorporated into Ptolemaic Egypt. What followed was a period of two centuries known as the Hellenistic period, Hellene being another way of saying Greek. This was an era in which Greek culture became paramount from southern Italy all the way to the borders of Afghanistan and Pakistan today. Alexandria, a city which Alexander founded at the mouth of the River Nile in northern Egypt and named after himself, became the greatest city in the world, famed for its incredible library where the leading scholars of the day congregated to study. In tandem, Greek became the lingua franca of the Eastern Mediterranean and Greek ideas around science, philosophy, and religion spread across much of the known world. Decline and fall, all good things come to an end. Even as early as the third century BCE, several of the Greek city-states and rulers such as King Pyrrhus of Epirus were being drawn into conflicts to the west where a small Italian state centered on a city called Rome was rising to become a major new power in the western Mediterranean. Over a period of two centuries, between the outbreak of the First Punic War between Rome and Carthage in modern-day Tunisia in 264 BCE down to the advent of the reign of Emperor Caesar Augustus in 27 BCE, Rome rose to become a slight power on the Italian peninsula to conquer much of the known world, extending its borders from the shores of northern Europe south to the deserts of the Sahara in Africa and eastwards all the way from the Iberian Peninsula to the Caspian Sea and Arabia. In the course of this, Rome engaged in several wars with the many Greek powers of the Eastern Mediterranean, conquering the Greek mainland and Macedonia in the middle of the second century BCE, before moving on to amalgamate Asia Minor, the Levant and Egypt into the Roman Empire in the first century BCE. With this, the political autonomy of the Greek and Hellenistic world came to an end, but Greek civilization profoundly influenced Roman culture, and in many ways, while the Romans conquered the Greeks militarily and politically, the Greek conquered the Romans socially and culturally. As a result, ancient Greece's impact on the cultures and societies of the ancient world continued and are still with us today. After all, who hasn't heard of Homer, the Trojan War, the 300 Spartans at Thermopylae, or seen Greek forms of architecture in their city center? Such is the legacy of ancient Greece.